Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to SQL Server Performance Monitoring and Tuning video brought to you by SQLWorkshops.com. In this video, we will talk about NUMA Remote Memory Access Overhead on Windows and SQL Server. In SQL Server, we will look at some examples related to disk-based tables and in-memory technology memory-optimized tables. In a NUMA-based system, you will have two or more nodes connected by an interconnect mechanism. Each node will have a set of CPUs and memory local to them. If this CPU wants to access local memory, it goes through the memory bus and the memory access is fast. If this CPU wants to access a remote memory, that is memory located on an another node, then it has to go through this interconnect mechanism and this access is slow. I wrote a little program called NUMA memory allocation. For this program, we can give two parameters. The first parameter is the node number and the second parameter is the amount of gigabyte we want to allocate in that node. This program prints in which node the memory was allocated after the allocation is complete. In Windows, when we request memory to be allocated on certain node, there is no guarantee the memory will in fact get allocated on that node. If there is no memory pressure and the memory is available, Windows will allocate memory from that node. If there is a memory pressure, it could allocate from a different node. That's why I print after allocating memory, which node I allocated the memory from. In this case, all of the memory was allocated from node 0. And after allocation, I split this memory into two parts. The first 4 gigabyte I initialize with some data and then copy this 4 gigabyte into this 4 gigabyte in a loop for 1000 times. And between each loop, I give a gap of 100 milliseconds and I print how long it took to complete the copy. I use the Windows call get tick count to measure the amount of milliseconds elapsed between these uh, operations. So here we see to do a copy it took 1579 milliseconds. And next, it took 1250 milliseconds. Let's start it again. We are requesting for the memory to be allocated from node 0, 8 gigabyte. It says the memory, in fact, was allocated. All of the memory was allocated in node 0. And here you see the uh, latency in copying data that is from the first 4 gigabyte to the other 4 gigabyte and it is not stable. Sometime it is 1219, sometime it is 1312, sometime it's 1265. What I am going to do is go to task manager and this is the amount of memory that was allocated. We go to the task manager details and here we click on this NUMA memory allocation program and set processor affinity. Right now, it can use any processor from any node. I'm going to uncheck all processors and I'm going to let it use only CPU 2 from node 0. So all other boxes are unchecked. So we are forcing it to use CPU 2 from node 0. I press OK. Let's look at the latency. It's 1141. It is very stable. What is happening here the memory was allocated from node 0 and we forced this program to use a CPU from node 0. So the access to this memory is local and it is 1156. Let's write down our access to local memory time is 1156 milliseconds. Let's now go back to task manager, right click and set processor affinity. This time we will force it to use CPU 2 from node 1. CPU 2 from node 1. I press OK. 
let's look at the response time. Now you see the response time is 1359, 1359. It's quite stable. What it is doing is accessing remote memory. We have memory allocated in node 0, but we forced this application to use a CPU that is node on node 1. So this is a remote access. So here is our memory allocated, but we are using a processor from node 1 to access this memory and it's going to through this interconnect mechanism and it is slightly slower. Let's look at this response time. It's 1375. Let's compare the difference. 1375. Let's see how slow the remote memory access overhead is. It is 18%. 18% more expensive to access the remote memory than the local memory. In Windows, when you request that memory should be allocated from certain node, Windows will do it as long as there is no memory pressure on that node. If not, it will allocate it from a different node. We saw an example where this overhead can be very high. It could be 15, 18.9% in our case. Of course, it depends on the processor model. The goal of this video is that you become aware of this overhead and learn how this overhead affects SQL Server and what you can do about it. We will talk about this overhead related to SQL Server, disk-based tables, and in-memory technology, memory-optimized table in the next video. If you have any questions related to this video, don't hesitate to contact me at rmayapan at sqlworkshops.com. Thanks for watching.